here for a weekend. Uh. What do you do when a national hero, allegedly, was out here wilding? Numerous affairs, illegitimate children, hosting orgies. <laughs> Hearing those things, you probably don't think about Martin Luther King Jr. But maybe you should. Many of the Black successful couples that we know and loved are looked at as couple goals, often referenced in lyrics and movies, their photos reposted to our Instagram threads, and just romanticized as a blueprint for us to imitate. Coretta Scott King and Martin Luther King Jr. are displayed for so many as hashtag couple goals, hashtag Black love, and they're an iconic depiction of Black love, and they have been for years. But was it all a lie? We all know his wife, Coretta. But what about his white girlfriend in very first love, Betty Moitz? Right now is known for cancel culture. We have evolved in terms of how actions are judged, perceived. We're holding people more accountable these days. And I have to know, would your perception of Martin Luther King Jr. change if you knew that there was concrete evidence of his excessive infidelity, a connection to an alleged sexual assault, and despite how we look at him for Black love, he actually had a preference for white women? As more and more is revealed, and we continue to analyze the past as well as our present, in our actions and the things that we say and the things that we do, are we able to separate MLK's legacy from his many, many indiscretions? Let's start from the beginning. While at his theological seminary in Pennsylvania, Martin Luther King was involved in a very serious relationship with a young white woman by the name of Betty Moitz. This was around 1949, so Keep in mind the social climate and just how controversial an inter interracial relationship was at that time. Listen, y'all, he loved Betty and he wanted to marry her. However, even at the young age of 19 and while in college, MLK still knew even then that he would make an impact on this world. And marrying a white woman was just not in the cards for his mission. However, his mentor at the time has stated, and it's documented in a few different biographies, that that breakup left him brokenhearted. His mentor literally said MLK never recovered. A woman he potentially wanted to marry, and we have never heard of her. Was it a cover-up because she was white? Okay, so let's move forward and look at the next phase of his life. MLK has now put in the work. He's gained notoriety as a civil rights leader. However, his affinity for white lovers and white women has never actually wavered at that time. And I'm saying this is while he's married to Coretta and has started a family. Y'all know I love a good documentary. And recently I watched the MLK FBI documentary. And we all have heard about the wiretaps that the FBI placed on Martin Luther King, fueled by racism, blatantly harassing him in an attempt to further tear him down. But some of those recordings also captured a lot about his personal life, as well as information on the movement. A lot of those recordings had him talking to his mistresses and even planning out exploits with sex workers. Those FBI audio tapes allege that MLK had affairs with over 40 women in multiple states and allegedly fathered children within his affairs. And, and those children have never been acknowledged or identified. While traveling for the protests and marches, MLK and his team allegedly lived a very wild bachelor type lifestyle. FBI documents stated that naked women, naked, Naked, honey. Naked women would run the halls of the hotel floors they stayed on and that they were bringing white prostitutes into their rooms. The most alarming allegation in all of it is that Martin Luther King was present in a hotel room when a friend of his, 
Baltimore pastor Logan Curse forcibly had non-consensual intercourse, or the R word. I don't want to say it because I don't want them to take my video down. <laughs> but he forcibly had non-consensual intercourse with the woman who resisted participating. So non-consensual intercourse forced upon her. And they're alleging that while Logan Curse was completing that horrific act, they're saying MLK was in the room. The FBI agent who was in charge of surveying the room stated that MLK looked on, laughed, and offered advice. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come <laughs> on, man. Even his marriage to Coretta wasn't the romanticized version we've been made to believe that it was. Listen, we knew that they were in the middle of a whole civil rights movement. So we knew that that was placing a lot of strain on their actual marriage. But even outside of the movement itself, the bond that we've been led to believe they had that was all of this empowerment and appreciation and respect for one another, it actually really wasn't that type of relationship that we've been hyped up to believe that it was. Despite Coretta being college educated, intelligent, street smart, with all of these great ideas, in addition to that, having a desire to be more active in the movement, Martin Luther King was very traditional and sometimes sexist towards her. As her husband, he felt that her role as a wife was to stay home and raise children. Ultimately, forcing Coretta to silence her dreams and ambitions to fulfill what he wanted for their family. He made that decision and there was really nothing that she could do about it. And we knew that this is something she was passionate about and ultimately wanted to do because after he was assassinated, she went on to accomplish all of those great things. But it's been revealed now that that's actually what she wanted to do the entire time. And Martin Luther King was often on the road for a hundred days at a time. Coretta was single-handedly raising their four children, but she also had to deal with his oppression when it came to the financial side of things. He had an intense discomfort about materialistic things. He didn't want anything to be flashy or anything that he deemed to be flashy, even if it provided comfort to his family. Most of his money and his finances went to support the movement, while Coretta and the children had to rely solely on his very slim earnings as a pastor. When they did finally buy their house for a mere $10,000 in 1965, Coretta did an interview stating that MLK didn't want her to buy the curtains that were hanging up. I'm like, all oh, this this woman had to deal with and sis couldn't buy curtains? Curtains. And speaking of when he was assassinated, even the, even the night before his assassination, it's been revealed that he had a mistress actually staying at the very hotel that we know to now be famous for where he was assassinated. So in hearing all of this, it's a little difficult to not then also just start to consider his character and who he actually was just as a person based on how he did treat his wife. There is also an article and an excerpt, and you can actually read the full biography if you like, that addresses a time where he actually did reveal to Coretta that he did have a long-term affair. In addition to all of the other affairs and flings that he had as he traveled, in addition to his, he had his wife, but then he also had what a lot of people deemed the other wife because he was in a long-term relationship with that woman from 1963 up until his death. And she's who is rumored to have been at the hotel the night before his assassination. But the part that's even more damning is he told Coretta that information while she was recovering from a surgery. 
As of now, the full audio and the evidence from the wiretaps are sealed until 2027 that was mandated by a federal judge. But there are countless biographies and so much literature out here that all reveal these same behaviors when it comes to the man that actually was Martin Luther King and just not the figure that the history books have created for us to idolize. Knowing what we know so far, because keep in mind, we don't know everything that's going to come out on those wiretaps, but just knowing what we know so far, how does this affect your view of MLK and how you celebrate him? Or does it affect you at all? How do we process that one of the most famous black marriages and the most symbolic, iconic <laughs> archetypes of what's supposed to be the best type of black love had a husband who preferred women of another race and specifically white women, a whole civil rights leader who fought against white supremacy, who was willingly and actively risked it all his family, his children, his safety, to sleep with white women. Is this yet another moment to prove that we need to release Stan culture and putting these celebrities and public figures on pedestals? Stop idolizing these historical and celebrity figures? Or does none of this even matter because of all that he's accomplished? Yes, he is a hero. He's a hero to this nation. He's a hero amongst black people. He's a hero. But he's also human. How much of someone's personal life makes who they are as a person? How much does what a man does in the privacy of his hotel rooms and homes make a man? What do we do when our heroes have allegedly been out here wilding. I want y'all to decide. Happy MLK Day!